after a long day adventuring, it's it's nice to come down to the tavern, wet your whistle on a nice cold ale. Nothing but the finest for you. Hey guys, I heard we were doing an episode about bars. Oh, Phil? Phil, it was taverns. Taverns! We're doing taverns. It's the same thing. Hi there everyone, we're Breaking Character. And today we're going to talk to you about starting your own tavern at your LARP. We, we've run taverns before, right? Sort yeah. of, kind of. Yes, 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 yes we have. Uh, <laughs> between our experiences and our experiences with our friends, we kind of think we know how we'd run a tavern, uh, how to run a bar. So let's go through some of the things that you're going to need in order to run a bar that's in genre, because you know we can sit around with with our little Kool Aid cups and and our Capri Suns all day, but to really <laughs> to make this feel like you're actually sitting in a bar drinking, we we need just to take that a little bit step above. Phil, Mister Anachronism over there, uh, what do you think is the most important thing to have in a tavern? Well, the number one obvious thing that you need to have to sell the experience is something to drink. <laughs> and that's there's there's. Some varying schools of thought on that, but nobody just wants to drink plain old water all the time if they don't have to. And you obviously can't have alcohol at these games because a lot of players are under 21. Yes. So we, we need to sell something that looks like alcohol, uh, but does not have the effects of alcohol. The most common thing that I've seen people use is just iced tea. Um, it's It's got that satisfying brown coloration to it. And there's not much in it, especially if you're not going for the, the highly sweetened stuff. It's just slightly flavored water at that point. You, you can go the, the, the homemade method and actually make your own iced tea, but a lot of people just grab the, the little powder. Yeah, just pour it in uh, your bottle and powdered Lipton. It's, it's quick and easy. Um, shake it up and boom, there you go. You got yourself you, a, a liquor. There are some other beverage options if you're feeling a little more adventurous. Um, I have seen pe plenty of people who use root beer. Um, it's got beer right there in the name. <laughs> but people get a little weird about sugary drinks in the hot months. When we used to go to our Wild West Cowboy LARP, uh, I remember I used to go and buy the, um, the bottles of, of fake champagne. Ooh, uh, the, yeah. the fake alcohol bottles. And those are perfectly fine. Again, we pe peeled the labels off and they were good to go. Those but were for special occasions. You get the sparkling grape juice. There, there it is. Oh, that's oh, yeah, the name yeah of those were good. They were good. They were very sweet though, mm -hmm. and again, it was like five, six dollars a bottle. Whereas the Lipton iced tea variety, I mean, you're spending five dollars for the powder, and you just, <laughs> we've been using the same powder for you know so. a, a good while, a good couple <laughs> games. So if you're concerned about price, that could be an issue. I know a lot of our games we used to go to would do Kool Aid, and that, that's fine. You know, you can get a you can go away with a purple looking like some. Um, unspoken liquid, but I mean, if you want blood, red Kool-Aid, that's, yeah. that's the well, way Especially to go. if you're going to one of the little more fantastical games where it's not something that's clearly based on history. If, if you go to your post-apocalyptic <laughs> drink and you're... If you go to a post-apocalyptic game and your drink is bright green... Sure! <laughs> my, my orc only drinks elf blood. I think that's actually. I think that's yeah. actually great. Or it's a, it's a, a mana potion, or or something. I brewed this, which is brew, and it's bright blue, and it's clearly Gatorade. But you know, have a have a set. Now, now, Gatorade is something that that a lot of people would like to drink. But again, it gets a little bit expensive if yeah. you're buying it in the individual bottles. So they also sell powdered Gatorade. Um, it it just comes in a little carton about yay big, and it's 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 always going to be either orange or lemon lime flavor. <laughs> Great but, for those summer events. <laughs> yeah, like it's you can you can make five gallons out of it easy. So the next thing to to talk about is how you drink your drinks in game. Yeah, we don't want to drink out of a red solo cup or, or, a, or a clear plastic water bottle or anything along those lines. We we can do better than that. Yeah. You can bring your own drinking vessel. You know, you can bring a water skin or a canteen or a drinking flask of what have you. Mm -hmm. But if you're running your tavern, I feel like you should be able to provide for your customers a vessel to drink out of. Yeah. So, so what have we found? What have we used? Well, we've obviously got these guys. They're a little bit pricey, but they are undeniably cool <laughs> and satisfying to drink out of in a whole range of game genres. But the, the other thing this that... This a set? Yeah, I, I've got this set of... These are tin uh, drinking vessels 
that came with a pitcher and eight cups and a little serving tray um, that also will work wonderfully for anything up through uh, medieval fantasy. Th this can get very expensive trying to come up with a bunch of drinking uh, cups for your customers. But I feel like th these are really good options. We thrifted these, obviously. We got a big set of these for, I believe it was like, like 12 bucks or something. I remember yeah, I bought a bunch of these yeah. for like 12. And your set was... Um, with with everything, I think it was like $30 out of a, a uh, thrift store uh, with the tray and with, with the pitcher and with the little smaller pitcher. But, but like you said, it's, it's usable for multiple games. It's, it's yeah. just locked in. And these, are, and these are nice enough. You could use them as your day-to-day. -day, um... <laughs> there is a glass bottom on some of these. Now, it depends on which version that you're buying you, you find out there. Uh, some of them have glass bottoms. Some of them don't have glass bottoms. So that might be the only piece to worry about. But we're always looking out for safety in our games. So having something that's entirely metal that won't break, that's really safe. On that note, let's talk about glass bottles. <laughs> so, Kevish, this bottle, I mean, this looks great. It, mm -hmm. It's got a nice texture to it. It's got this like nice little quirky thing, you know. How oh, much I this, love those. How much did this cost you? Uh, that is a tequila bottle that I would have bought anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it just, it was a cool looking bottle, so we kept it. So, if you're running an actual tavern, you can be reasonably certain that there's not going to be a whole lot of fights breaking out immediately next to your glassware, so you can do something like this as long as you have a, like a designated no fighting here, or if you're at a, at a combat-free game. Yeah, that, I mean, obviously, you know, I don't think I've ever seen somebody actually jump over a table. I have. <laughs> Hopefully, we haven't seen someone jump over tables, but they, people have that kind of respect of like, oh, hey, look, there's that guy's really nice expensive glass set. Let's not shoot Nerf guns near there, or let's now not that, swing boffers Now that there. said, yeah. nothing is a guarantee, so maybe don't bring your grandmother's crystal, crystal vase. Yeah, this, this is a really nice old trick. You just find a bottle that you probably have lying around half empty and just wash it out and... Oh, that's, that's such a nice sound. Every, every, everybody loves those uh, skull vodka bottles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a glass bottle shaped like a skull. You could do anything with that. <laughs> Serving an entire bar with just one or two of these, you know, that might be really uh, time consuming. So, do we have something bigger? We sure do. So, this is hollow plastic. <laughs> This is, um, as you know, I'm an educator. This is from a standard uh, website called Oriental Trading. If you're looking for party supplies, shipping's a little little much on it, but Oriental Trading has a lot of interesting things. Uh, and it was actually cheaper to buy two of those, uh, shipping-wise. If you, I think it was, at the time, if you bought more than $50 worth of merch, you got free shipping. So those were around $25 each. Just bought two of them and had free shipping there. Now, I've also seen where a friend of mine uh, just got the the five-gallon, you know, Gatorade-branded cooler and painted it up, decorate the outside to look like an upright barrel that's, like that. <laughs> that's really cool. It was. Yeah, and that's, and that's what he served his drinks out of. It's really easy to clean out. I usually just throw water in there and then use that to... Because I don't want to wash it out after every single game. So I pour water in it, and then from there I fill up a glass bottle or I fill so up my cups. So you just have regular water in this, and then yes. you use that to make your your batch, your individual bottles of tea where people can just drink straight water. Yes, but it, you know if, if I was running a larger bar, I would just fill that with my liquid. I would just fill that with mm -hmm. my cool later, fill that with my iced tea. But I don't usually give out that much. I don't usually make that much. Now about this Kevish, now I recognize this because this was, I believe, a Christmas present to you. <laughs> yeah, this thing is made of wood <laughs> with uh, some metal pieces on the sides. It is obviously a recreation. It is uh, yeah, with its, with not its old plastic be... nozzle on the end. Don't worry about yeah, that. But, but you could <laughs> you could fill this with up with water and it would work just fine. This one we use mostly for decorative purposes, but I love having it back there in this bar. Now that that would be since it's such a small vessel, it would be for something that you were serving in like shots. Because yeah. like if you're you would you would get maybe two full glasses out of that thing, <laughs> but it, still it looks really great and you know, really solid construction. Mm -hmm. And I'm always a, I'm always a key for safety. I always want to keep an eye out for our safe players. So these two options are great. They they can fall over and they're pretty good, pretty standard. 
Yep. I know it's middle of summer. I mean, I'm sweating in our studio set right now. <laughs> but what if it's early in the morning and you're really tired? Or what if it's late at night and you want to just keep going, get to that, that witching hour of 3 a.m. so you could find that mystery NPC who what? only comes out? You need coffee. Coffee. Yeah, we need coffee for this one. <laughs> so, briefly, we, you know, you can get your own instant coffee, but this is such a simple, easy trick. We got this at a camping supply store. Yeah, this is just this is just a camp coffee pot, but it's got your built-in brewing apparatus. Throw in your coffee, put in your water. Oof. Nothing like coffee out of this thing at, you know, midnight to oh. keep me going. <laughs> And again, you got these these amazing like ceramic ceramic. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're 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 coated with they're glazed. They're glazed. That would be the phrase. So they're metal and they do get hot. But oh my god, those those wintry nights, those wintry nights when you're out there and you're just you oh. got this cup and then the smoke's coming out of it. Oh my. Yeah. I'm already yeah, I'm getting flashbacks it. right now. Jeez. So this this guy is oh. meant to be used either on a hot plate if you can get away with that or you put it on a hot rock next to a fire because this is this is camping gear yeah so if you've got a game where you can actually have like open fires you just get one of those rocks that sits next to the fire and set this on it we uh with our larps uh they usually have a fire but you need to have someone to tend to it so yes. i'm not going to force somebody to, to sit there and watch my coffee for me. So that's why I usually go with a hot plate. I got this guy at Walmart for under $20. Uh, he's almost on the fritz, but almost. it's- Almost. Almost, yeah. He's, <laughs> sometimes he doesn't like to work and then you gotta, But um, it's a really great trick. You just set it to medium, set it to high, set it to low, and you're good to go. Just put your coffee on top and- Hot plates are low enough profile that you can, you can pretty easily disguise them or hide them behind a, a pile of clutter and we have plenty of clutter to work with. Oh yeah. Safety wise, don't leave it unattended. Yeah, it is, it's, it is just, it's a, an electric heater, you, you never want to leave those unattended and you never want to have anything flammable close to them. Or have, again, fighting nearby. Last thing you need is somebody um, and you don't want to be the one responsible for burning down your cabin. Ooh, <laughs> luckily I've never done that. Did you say it like it's happened before? No. Okay. <laughs> no, we've never seen that happen. Before. So these again, they're very simple, very easy tricks. Um, we bring sugar. We bring um, our own coffee or our own cream. Uh, just really simple. Throw it in there, and we also provide spoons for our customers. Mm -hmm. Some people get a little antsy about the, like the communal sugar bowl, so we do yeah. have some some individual sugar packets, sugar packets. If, if people ask, but. Yeah, like, generally speaking, uh, if you can get everything into some sort of vessel besides the labeled cardboard that they came in, it's helpful. <laughs> we have some other items here on the table, so let's talk about that. Uh, mainly, these guys. These metal yep, plates. These are the same as the cups. They're, they're glazed metal. Um, this one has some uh, chipping going on from the glaze. Yeah. As you will definitely see when you're finding these at the thrift store, but that also allowed us to buy these Fairly cheap, actually. Yeah. Yeah. If you get the if you get the old beat up ones, they still hold food just fine. I think the thing that you know we're trying as as larpers, we're trying to stay away from walking around with like solo cups and paper and plates. Paper plates, yeah. So let's also talk about the the environmental effect of this. I mean, you're cutting down on trash by by using reusable material. Yeah. So number one, you're you're being environmentally safe. Uh, and then it feels and looks really cool when you're walking around with your cup and your little plate and you got and some you get, stew and in you there. you get jumped by monsters. Yeah. And <laughs> you have to call a hold and be like, I, okay, this stuff's really hot. Oh, I got, I got my stew and I got a coffee. Let me put it down. But yeah, it's, I think it looks, it feels really cool and it's also good for the environment. You're making less trash. Um, a lot, a lot of games are... Oh. A lot of games are putting in a reward of some kind to players who bring their own mess kit. Um, these are the sorts of things that people show up with as a mess kit, but I have never seen just one plate for sale. <laughs> yeah, that's, that is very true. So maybe you can go in with, with a team, you know, go in with a couple yeah. people and, you know, hey, I bought four plates, one, two, mm -hmm. three, four, boom, done. I guess that's one of the biggest negatives with running a tavern is you're going to take a lot of time setting up at game, 
during game and then post game. Yeah, you gotta pack all of this stuff into your car, take it to the game, and then set up wherever you're gonna be. Hopefully you can park close, because otherwise you're gonna have to cart your boxes all the way up the stairs and around the corner. And then you're gonna get, you know, maybe 36 hours of use out of it, and then you gotta put it all away and take it back to your car. And in the meantime, <laughs> you have to wash dishes because you definitely didn't bring 400 of these metal plates. No, you did not. Uh, yeah, so it ends up being you lose something for game time. Yeah, when, you, when you, you play the this. game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you came here to yeah, LARP. You, when you, you came to the LARP to play the game, and now you're trying to incorporate this into the game, but it really just sometimes it turns into a job. Now, now what I have seen people who run some of these do is they will outsource their cleanup to, you, you can outsource to the customer, but I, I've also seen it where you get like the, the person who's a new player, they don't, they don't have much uh, set up yet, or they're just playing a character who is intentionally being a, a, a low income menial task worker. And, and you say, hey, if you will wash my dishes, I will pay you in-game with, with the in-game currency. And if, like, if you get the right person, that's exactly the sort of thing they're looking for. <laughs> to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the shoeshine boy. I will definitely <laughs> wash these dishes for you for a reasonable wage. Like, you don't want to be a dick about it. But if, if you really hate washing dishes or you just don't have time or what have you, you, you there are some options. Phil, I feel like that sounds like an, like an outlandish story. Like, who wants to go to a LARP and pretend to be a shoeshine boy? Our first game at Dead Legends, I was that guy who late at night they ran out of cups and they said, I'll pay someone. And I jumped behind the bar and I washed cups and I made my first dollar game that way. And I loved it. So you're absolutely right. And you're bringing now people into the game. You're bringing them into the role play of, yeah. you know. And it's like, I, I know people don't come to these things looking to work. But at the same time, if if you're just doing a, a, an easy 10-minute chore for for a dollar, or what you know, whatever the appropriate wage would be in your a gold piece, it's not bad. It's not bad. Um, yeah. People are willing, always willing to, to help out. Yeah. And the worst they can say is no. Let's transfer now because we talked about the negatives. We showed off all of our cool gear we've got. Let's talk about the really positives of running the tavern because. We ran uh, a pulled pork shop for about two years where we brought pulled pork, it was cold, and then we put it in, in crock pots, and then we cooked it, and then we made sandwiches. So what are the benefits socially of running a tavern, running a food joint, running this? So Besides in game money. Why, why do you want to do this? Yeah, why do you want to do this? <laughs> so in the early days of that game, when we didn't have a lot of people who showed up prepared to cook, our, our simple crock pot pulled pork was the hot meal that a lot of people had yeah, over we the course of the weekend. And because of that, all of those people who got used to us having the pulled pork at dinner time on Saturday, they they were looking forward to it. They knew who we were. <laughs> they like Everyone at that game knew the three of us because we were the pulled pork guys. Yes. We'd stand out there and yell, pulled pork sandwiches! And they'd come crawling. Like, every, yeah, 5 o'clock on every so, Saturday. So it meant that when at 2 o'clock on a Saturday we needed something, we weren't just talking to strangers. We were talking to the people that, that we served dinner to. Yeah. And it opened doors for us. Oh yeah, as definitely. players, new players coming into this game, it opened the doors of, hey, now we we need these people. They need us, and, <laughs> and now we're role playing with each other. And now that the game has been going longer, and it has more people who are showing up, excited about actually feeding people three meals a day. <laughs> um, they we've we've taken a step back and let them have that because they're. They're frankly doing a better job than we ever did. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. We had, we had too much going on and we, we cooked a crock pot meal. And these people were supposed <laughs> to stand over a, a, a hot plate and, and actually cook something. Yeah. Oh. Late night chicken, man. Ooh. Midnight chicken. Oh. Midnight chicken. And so now those are the people that everyone knows and, and if they ever need help, they'll be like, oh, yes, Almondine, I, I recognize you because you have fed me. So it seems like it's a lot of work and it seems like there's a lot of oh my gosh, I'm putting a lot of my investment time and money into this, but I feel like the benefits you can get out of this, socially at a game, 
is immense. People know the cooks. People know. <laughs> yeah, oh, we, we have made friends with the pulled pork. I'll someone's tell you bringing that. chili. You know, someone's bringing pulled pork. Someone's baking. We have someone who bakes at game and does mm. orders and comes in with cupcakes and cookies. And you become a member of this game, not yeah. just because you swing an axe really hard. Yeah, it's, it's so a, it's cool. A, it's a it's a great way to to make yourself be a part of the community. And some people just also really like to, to cook and provide that for people. And very and, motherly. Like. Yeah. Final thoughts Final on thoughts. running a tavern. Oof. It's a lot of work, but uh, for some people that's like that's what they're here there to play, and if that's your thing. I, we all appreciate you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It, like seriously, it is it is very appreciated. When we didn't have to make our own coffee anymore, that was always the best. Someone else is selling coffee. Oh, sweet. This is perfect. Fill me up. We don't have to make it anymore. <laughs> so yeah, we appreciate it immensely that when people do these kinds of things at game. I mean, it definitely greases it, it greases the palms of it. I've used that phrase before. You know, you can if you're making the coffee, people are gonna come and hang out at your cabin because oh, so and so makes the coffee, so we'll come hang out over there. So there's definitely a lot of positives to it. A lot of work involved, and you gotta be you gotta be dedicated. No one wants to get coffee off of you if you're like. Uh, you want more coffee? Uh, you gotta wanna do this. Yeah, I think I think the price of our coffee was come over here and stand on our porch and talk for a minute. So any other final final thoughts? No. No. Uh let's well, drink. I guess I guess that's it then. It's huh? time for a toast. To our uh, To the barman! To the barman! Or or what well, barkeeper, bar lady, bar man, bar person. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. Where did you get this? Ah, that's from that's from Connecticut. <laughs> but did you, did, does this taste bad? Woo! We <laughs> We are Pittsburgh Connection! Oh my god, no we're not! We're breaking character! Night, this everybody. was iced tea! It was iced tea, I swear! <laughs> we are breaking character. Thank you very much, and uh, we will see you at the tavern! <laughs>